So, uh, good morning, Pi Gotham. Um, I think we forgot to start things off on um, how we do things at NYC Python. So, hello, my name is Adrian. And I'm an engineer on the search and discovery team at a startup here in New York called Teachers Pay Teachers. Uh, a little bit more on that a little bit later. But uh, first, let's look at some data. <coughs> As this is a data talk. So, here's a pie chart, which tells you absolutely nothing. You can see that maybe the blue, green, or red are the largest pieces of the pie in this uh, data set, but it doesn't really say what it is. Let's take a look at a bar chart of the same data, because I know what this data is. At least there's a y-axis where I could see <coughs> that there is definitively one large piece of a pie, or this part, uh, one largest of whatever this data set is but still doesn't really tell you what's going on. So let's fix that. So here, um, and maybe some of you know um, by the labels what's going on now. Um, there is definitively a, the largest piece of pie, which is NN. Um, that's the blue in the top right quadrant with a 12.2%. Followed up by um, IN and NNS um, ranking up the top three. And just to fill in the um, bar chart, um, the same way, it's exactly what that is. <coughs> so, um, for anyone that's familiar with NLTK, um, this is exactly what the labels meant. Um, it's what that was, is the frequency distribution of the part of speech tags. So, anyone familiar with NLTK? All right, a couple of you guys. So, that's white, uh, that's wonderful. Um, so, like I said, I'm on the search and discovery team, so, um, Natural language is very important to us at Teachers Pay Teachers. So let's explore more. Um, what do those labels tell us? Because you're looking at the part of speech tags and not looking at what's going on with the actual data that was analyzed. So this is um, now a <coughs> similar um, list of tuples where you're getting the counts of the most common uh, nouns here. So NN is nouns for anyone familiar with the NLTK. And this was generated via um, counter, which is in collections, um, just basically counting every single one of the words that were tokenized, um, but as long as they were part of speech tags of NN. And similarly, um, just to do the top three, um, IN is preposition. Um, this, these words don't exactly tell us what the text is, but um, you can see that you know of is um, of in on are the top three. And just to do the uh, top three, um, NNS is plural nouns, um, and look at that um, data was used 16 times. So um, now we're getting a brief intro and in what's going on with this text that was analyzed, even though you guys don't know what's going on but you can get an idea that data is pretty important to what this text is. So um, English language, um, obviously verbs are um, very important um, to understanding what's going on. Um, so let's take a look at that. Um, for NLDK, you could uh, bring up a list of the part of speech tags for verbs. Um, VBZ is not listed, um, but um, I just wanted to point out that I'm gonna be looking at VB and VBG. So, <coughs> here we have another list of tuples um, with their counts, respectively, and it gives you a general idea on what's going on in this text on what you, we're analyzing. But we still don't know what's going on with this data. But what we do know this far is NN and NNS are nouns, um, and um, just looking at the most common ones, it kind of sounds like some sort of technical text. We've got data, we've got web, some sort of dashboards, users, but nothing really specifically saying that this is a technical text. But the verbs, um, while they are somewhat leading towards the technical text, they can be used in other senses. So, <coughs> what I did here was uh, I made phrases just so I could uh, understand what's going on a bit more, even though I do know what the data set is. So um, took a product of the verbs with the most common plural nouns. Um, this is a product from iter tools. And from there, we have this. 
So this gives us a better insight on what's going on in this text that we're analyzing. So we have have data, be data, want data. Maybe we want to be data. So, um, but more importantly, let's take a look at presenting data or pulling data. Things that I've just talked about. So, what is this text? Do we have any guesses? All right, so this is the abstract of this talk. So this was a very long-winded way for me to introduce what we're talking about by talking about what I'm talking about. So um, push, pull, present. So obviously, um, this text was pushed to PyGotham site somehow, and it's stored in some sort of data store. Um, I honestly did not pull it um, down by scraping it um, because I own this text. But um, we're constantly pulling data from that source just to be able to manipulate it, um, just to cleanse it, um, just to get part of speech tags. And obviously, I, I was using matplotlib and standard Python utilities to uh, present. And that's the gist of what I'm going to be talking about. But before we continue, a little background. Um, so like I said, I work at Teachers Pay Teachers. I'm on the search and discovery team. Uh, we are an open marketplace for educators. So what does that mean? Um, <clears throat> we pretty much follow the Etsy model. Um, any sort of, do we have any educators in the teachers, ex-teachers, one teacher? That's fine. Hi, Meg. <laughs> so um, teachers pay teachers, um, just as a brief background. Um, educators spend a lot of time making resources to um, prepare for their um, students. And that takes an awful lot of time for them to do so. So <clears throat> why not be able to sell these resources online? And that's what Teachers Pay Teachers is. So I work on the search and discovery team. Um, some quick search notes. So all searches are, that come in are education focused. What does that mean to us? So that means when I, well, when whoever is searching for weather, they're not looking to find out what today's weather is. They're actually looking for resources on weather, how to teach weather to their kids, to their students, rather. And being in an open marketplace, um, sellers, they want to rank higher on search. So um, if we want to implement changes to search, uh, we have to think about that very, very um, thoughtfully, because one search change could cause users X, Y, Z to drop couple of spaces, but, and they'll be mad, but on the other hand, users A, B, C, they go up in rank. So you can't please everyone, but we are very tightly um, tied to the community, and we tell them pretty much everything. And with doing so, we A, B test a lot, and we show them data. We say, hey, this will be work well for our um, community as a whole. We will all do well and better if we implement this change. Here's some data to prove that. So quick talk about um, our data flow. Um, our data flow is actually really simple right now. Um, we use um, GA Premium, and that actually just goes directly to BigQuery. Uh, BigQuery event data, um, we're able to do a lot. Um, we do a lot of ingestion that's not shown on this chart, um, just for the purpose of this talk. But we build out dashboards um, using Flask, uh, React, and D3 React. So a lot of things that are tightly knit to the Python community, just so we could um, exploit what's in our BigQuery data. And to do analysis, we're, we obviously love our Jupyter Notebooks, and we are customers of Mode Analytics, which they have now introduced Notebooks as well. So very wonderful with that. <coughs> so, an example um, on a change that we wanted to change. Um, so exclusion search. Um, that's basically when you wanted to add a dash to whatever you want to negate in your search. So first uh, bullet point, apples, bananas, and dash pumpkins. So that means I want to return all search results with apples and bananas, but it, I don't want to have any of the search results to have pumpkins. And like I said, um, searches are education focused. Um, so things like suffixes were something that we saw in our um, incoming searches. 
and we didn't want to um, make any of our users mad. So to back up our um, plan on how we're going to implement this uh, negation search, um, or the not operator, we looked at historical searches and around 519 million. And we saw a very tiny fraction of people that were actually using um, the not operator. And that is the number right there. So roughly 202,000 of the historical searches of 519 million. So what that meant was that we could make this change affecting a very minuscule amount of users that were actually using the dash operator. But to take it a step further, we wanted to have our users still be able to do suffix searches um, since some of them were actually using them. So um, this is a list of um, the most common suffix searches that were um, searched for. So obviously ed, ing, ful. Those are the top three. What we did there, um, since we now have a list, um, we whitelisted them. So what that meant was that there are users that wanted to use the not operator could still use the not operator. Ones that wanted to use search for suffixes, they were able to search for suffixes. <coughs> so we're moving on to A-B tests. Um, so A-B tests for us, they're basically a nice way to use statistics to prove what we want to um, test. So here's a simple problem that we had. So if you look over there, circled in red on the bottom left, that is a PDF icon. Very common. But, um, and this is um, a small snapshot of um, one of our product pages. The problem was that the users thought that was a link and they were just clicking on it, but it wasn't a link, it was just there for display. So obviously bad user experience. No one liked that. So we had a hypothesis that if we change that out to either a small icon or no icon, then obviously that would be a better user experience. <coughs> so we had two AB variants, which is a small icon and no icon like I just said. Um, those are two small snapshots of what they look like. We have our A-B dashboards um, that basically prove to us um, that our A-B tests are working. Um, what we're looking here is um, just uh, bucketing. Bucketing is um, exactly what it sounds like, it's bucketing. Um, you want a basically 50-50% uh, chance of bucketing from A or variant B. And to see that the off and on are exactly the same means that our A-B tests are working and our code is working properly. Another thing that, um, well, one of the many things that we use to kind of prove that um, our A-B tests are working, for us at least, um, being that we're a marketplace, um, so download rate is very important to us. So here's where we want to say that the orange is we want the orange to win, um, just so that it'll prove to us how well our A-B tests are working. And we uh, do a lot of metrics based off of um, um, purchases and um, actual clicks, and uh, we're gonna look at that now. So here's the clicks. Um, obviously with it off, um, this A-B test ran for, I believe, two to three weeks. Um, clicks um, with the A-B off was around 430,000. And that's 430,000 clicks that people were just clicking on nothing. Um, that surprised us. And small icon, we weren't expecting people to still be clicking on things even if it wasn't a sort of link, but people actually did. So with small icon, there was 26,000. And with no icon, obviously, they didn't click on anything. So with that, we have, uh, we, you see which um, AB we ended up choosing to roll out and with that's no icon. So A-B tests in a nutshell are hypothesis, test, and analyze. Your push, pull, and present. So now I'm gonna um, change gears to a little funner example that's not related to work. So it's a simple running example, um, running uh, being a pun there. Do we have any active runners? 
Yay. So um, this is a um, from mobile data. It's pulled directly from Strava. Um, Strava is a running app. Um, it basically monitors your running. Um, the distance you run, how far you run is the distance. I'm sorry. Um, how fast you've run, et cetera. Um, but my issue with that was that there is no real way for me to see how I was progressing. I'm not, I've never considered myself a runner. I've only started running maybe three months. Um, funny things that doctors can tell you. So um, what I wanted to do was create a new um, charts for me to see how I'm improving. So this is uh, from StravaLib. Um, you could pip install StravaLib. And I was able to pull down all my activities and how far I've run and um, basically create new data charts off that. So what we see here, it's exactly what I said. Um, it's my runs from May till now. And <coughs> we see in, on the left uh, y-axis the kilometers I've run. Um, what this tells me is that, you know, okay, we see on the bottom data points that I've run just about six kilometers, and that tells me that's my Monday through Friday run because I have less time. But what I wanted to see was that I was steadily increasing on my longer runs, so close to peaking around 22 kilometers. So, A for me. So, what I wanted to do now, since I saw that um, all of my uh, weekday runs were just about the same, I wanted to see how my speed was progressing, or not progressing in this case. So, here's what I have there. It's, um, I was able to pull down, um, and what I saw was that I peaked around 13 kilometers per hour, and, and what I see on that big dip closer to now was that there was a, a slight injury that I had to stop and then slow things down. So those are things that um, I kind of work on. Um, not this running stuff, but um, uh, pushing data and pulling data and presenting data. That's the things I work on at Teachers Pay Teachers. And you can find these references online. Um, so references for NLTK, um, StravaLib um, was what I just presented. And all the examples you could, that I've just presented can be seen on my GitHub. So like I said, I'm on the search and discovery team at Teachers Pay Teachers, so a lot of thanks to them. Um, I work with really smart folks, um, and they're very helpful. And we are hiring. And that's all I've got. Thank you. I've got just about five minutes for questions. If there are any, I believe I've been told that the microphones do work. Yes. Hello. Whoa. Got it. Uh, just wanted to know, how did you measure the clicks on the icon um, that, that didn't have a link associated with it? Sure. Oh, the um, clicks on the things that didn't have a link on it. Um, <clears throat> so there are, um, we obviously do um, J Premium um, and a lot of front end, um, but there is um, click tracking events on the div that was basically a pixel. A Got tiny, it. tiny pixel. Cool. Thanks. No other questions. I will be here for both days, so feel free to say hi. Thank you. <laughs>